Yo, this is Danny Echeverria with theproaudiophiles.com, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about tips for doubling acoustic guitar. Uh, I've got an entire article about doubling, not just guitars, but any sort of instrument you might double, the reasons you would do it, and ways to do it effectively. That's up on the Pro Audio Files website, so if you want more information about this, please go check that out. Um, but in this video, I'm going to be focusing on just acoustic guitar. And acoustic guitar is a great thing to double, in my opinion, if you want to transform it into a more vibrant stereo instrument than you could get with just one guitar take. Even stereo miking one guitar, which I'm sure somebody disagrees with me about that, so let's talk about it in the comments. Uh, but uh, let's have a listen to the example we're going to be working with, and then I'll talk about why I think the doubling is so effective here. Check it out. So I mentioned two big features of the doubles that I think contribute to the sort of more vibrant stereo feel of it. One is uh, harmonic richness, and then the other is more rhythmic variety. Uh, let's look at the harmonic richness part. Um, so what's going on with these two guitar parts is that they're played uh, with different chord voicings. It's the same chord progression, but one is played capoed at the fourth, uh, played as if it were in D. The song is an F sharp, just if you're keeping track. The other one is capoed at the second, played as if the song were an E. So let's listen to, this is the higher one, capoed at the fourth. And then this is the lower one, capoed at the second. And together they sound like this. So those two parts together give you richer, bigger chords than you could play on a single acoustic guitar. It's just more, more notes, but it, in a way that is harmonically interesting and not just more. The other big thing that's going on is that there's some rhythmic variety between the two. Uh, this is an effect that you can take much farther than it goes in this song. You can intentionally create a stereo rhythm where the two parts sort of respond to each other and ping pong the rhythm back and forth. This is a little bit more of a naturalistic approach where they're playing around the same strumming pattern, but uh, they're being kind of lax about it. And one guitar will sort of hang back and let the other guitar get busier and then they'll trade roles. Uh, you can hear in this example, as I play it back, that there's gonna be a little flourish on the left side higher guitar and then a uh, moment later, the right side guitar is going to answer with its own flourish. Uh, take a listen to that. And then at the end of the phrase, they sort of meet in the middle. And the general concept here is that the more variety you have in the rhythm, the more sense of uh, movement you're going to have. Uh, there's going to be more back and forth. The more consistency there is in the rhythm, the more you're going to get this sort of monolithic, powerful thing. And I think a really effective way to do it is to have sort of a blend of both, where they diverge from each other, and then you get that sense of energy and movement, and then they come together and you get the power. Uh, it makes for a more sort of dy dynamic performance than uh, just sticking with one the whole time. So now that we've talked about what happened in the doubles, let's talk about how to process these. So even though I did some things to accentuate the differences between the two parts to make them more interesting and have more energy, I'm still going to treat them kind of like it's one instrument in the mix. Uh, I, I want it to feel like one sort of big, interesting instrument rather than two separate ones that I'm continuing to highlight how separate they are. So I'm going to do my processing for these guitars on a bus. I've got this acoustic guitar bus over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is throw some reverb on them using the Valhalla Vintage Verb. This is a great, uh, super useful, versatile reverb that's also very affordable. If you haven't checked it out already, I suggest you do. Um, and I'm going to just start dialing it in. I want a room sound. I don't want it to be too cavernous. I'm not looking for like a big, lush, obvious reverb. I'm just kind of trying to create some space around these guitars. So there's all these controls that sort of contribute to the feeling of the size of the room and the length of the reverb tail that I'm just kind of dialing back. Uh, the size attack, the late re late reflections, the, the pre-delay, and the decay time. And then I'm going to dial up a high-pass filter to filter out everything up to, let's say, around 500 hertz. Even though the guitars are playing notes below 500 hertz, this is only filtering the reverb. So it's clearing out muddy stuff from the reverb and leaving the dry signal intact. Um, because I'm doing this reverb as an insert on the bus, so 
as opposed to having a reverb bus that's a parallel track that I'm sending these tracks to, I'm just doing it in line with the dry signal. I'm gonna control my blend with the mix control. And to dial that up, I'm just gonna bring it down to zero and start to turn it up until I notice it doing something obviously. And then I'm gonna back it off that a little bit. So take a listen. So somewhere in like the high 20 percentage range is where I really start to notice like, oh, there's some reverb on that. So let's back it off a little bit. I'm not going for obvious. I'm going for subtle. I'm trying to glue these guitars together in a space. And let's listen to what that sounds like. This is around 20%. So I like the sense of depth that it adds, and I also like the sort of ambient glue. Let's A, B real quick. I'm going to bypass it and then bring it back in. So it feels just a little bit more natural to me with the reverb in, and it's got this depth to it that I like. Um, so let's move on. The next link in the chain is going to be some EQ and uh, the Fab Filter, Filter Pro Q3. I use it all the time, as you maybe know. And I'm going to start with a high pass filter, uh, filtering up to about 90 hertz. That's where the, the lowest note in the guitar part is an F sharp, so it lives around there. Uh, just filtering out mud. There's nothing useful going on down here, and it's eating up headroom that I need for the bass and for the kick, so get rid of it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is maybe going to be a little surprising to some of you, which is that I'm going to low pass filter it. And I say it might be surprising because acoustic guitar does have some high frequency stuff going on and it gives it some of that nice sparkle. Um, but this above 10 K that super high frequency range, um, is more important to me to save room for the drums in particular, the cymbals, and then also the vocals kind of silkiness of a vocal lives up there. Both of those uh, are more important to me in the mix than the acoustic guitar is. So I'm going to filter some of this out. Uh, take a listen to how that sounds in the mix. In particular, listen to the interaction between the guitar strumming pattern and the rhythm in the cymbals. I'm going to start with this bypass, and then I'm going to bring the EQ back in and listen for that difference. One more time, I want to play that back. It's subtle. Uh, listen to the cymbals in particular. So to my ears, when the filters are bypassed, uh, I'm really mostly hearing the acoustic guitars in that high frequency range. When the filters are in, I suddenly start to notice the rhythm on that ride cymbal that the drummer is playing, and it becomes a lot clearer, and I like that. If you find yourself missing that uh, high-end sparkle, though, you can kind of get the best of both worlds by adding a little resonant peak to the filter. I'm turning up the Q. There are other different reverbs will have different ways of doing this. But basically, I'm adding a little bump at the cutoff that is still going to filter off uh, what's, what's going on above it, but it's going to add this little high-frequency bump that will bring back some of the sparkle. So listen to that. So I still hear those cymbal rhythms, but I'm also getting back some of that sparkle, which I really liked. Um, the thing that I don't like that's going on here is that there's this sort of high mid uh, hiss that's going on, this sort of resonant hiss. I want to take care of that. So let's solo the guitars and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the problem frequency and cut it. Okay, so it looks like about 3.3K. That's what I was hearing. I'm going to cut that. And let's take a listen to that uh, in the mix once again. And I'll start with it bypass and then drop the EQ back in. So the guitars uh, keep that sparkle, but then they also clear away some room for the cymbals, which is great. And it gets rid of that uh, hissy resonance, which sort of obscures the meat of the notes that the part is playing. So uh, all in all, I like what this is doing a lot. Um, one last step uh, I'm going to take with this signal chain is uh, I'm going to add some saturation via tape 
This is the Waves Kramer tape. It's a cool, just easy to use tape machine plug-in. Uh, let's see, I don't want any wow or flutter. So what I'm just gonna do is drive the input of this thing. Uh, it's got uh, an automatic compensation for the output, so it's not gonna get louder as a result. But listen to the way that the added harmonics that this saturation is gonna add uh, make the sound feel sort of more robust and fuller. Uh, tape also has a nice way of kind of rounding out the spiky edges of uh, the attack of picks on acoustic guitar. So listen to that. I'm just going to start cranking this thing. So it sounds fuller to me and smoother also. Uh, let's let's uh, do a quick AB. I'm going to bypass it. So it sounds fuller and it sounds bigger to me, but as I watch the meters, it's not actually any louder, which is cool, because I don't want it any louder. It's not important enough to be turning up at this point. Um, let's hear this whole effects chain in and out. So I'm gonna bypass the whole thing and let's listen to this section, and then I'm gonna bring it in part way through. So it feels more natural to me, it feels a little bit smoother, uh, and it feels like it has more presence without actually moving in on any frequency real estate that I need for other instruments. So it feels like a win all around. Um, all right, that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully this has gotten your creative juices flowing with how to effectively double acoustic guitars and how to, how to process them. Uh, if there's stuff that I skipped over that you really like to do with doubled acoustics, let me know in the comments. Let's keep this conversation going. Once again, I'm Danny Echeverria with theproaudiofiles.com. If you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe to The Pro Audio Files. I'll be back real soon with more content, and there's lots more on the website as well. Peace. Happy mixing.